This is the best of Empty the Bench with Tom Albano, Nick Morgison, and Nick Federa on the Empty the Bench Podcast Network. Welcome, everybody, to episode two of the best of Empty the Bench. That's Nick Federa. I'm Nick Morgison. Tom is somewhere, just not on the screen. He wasn't feeling well, but he's still here in spirit producing this program, the best of Empty the Bench. And in this episode, we are going to do the top sports headlines of 2021. And Nick, there was quite a few on our part. There were quite a few on our part, specifically the ones where we go crazy, because those are those are always those are always good content. But you'll notice as we go through these uh, headlines that they often have a common theme. Either it was COVID, somebody said something stupid, or somebody got in trouble with the law, or you know what? It could have been it could have involved all three, like the or, and ice cream, or it could have been a riot. Or it could have been a riot. It's so moving through. So where should we start? Let's start. So in- we're going to start in the first four months of the year. We broke this down into three paths. So you're going to get a nice long episode of different moments from all three of us. Two of us here, Tom behind the scenes producing. And so in the first segment, this covers January through April. Now you have to remember the beginning of the year. We're still dealing with COVID. We're still dealing with this. Was we were just coming off the down, going up again, like on a positive stretch, right? Yeah, I, yeah. It was uh, I? I mean, at this point, I don't think I don't think either of us had gotten vaccinated. So it was. Uh, I mean, a lot of the early content of the year was basically just trying to see what kind of what would happen to sports as things started to come. Uh, back online, so to speak. So just to look at some of the comments, now I can remember these like they were yesterday, even though it was the beginning of the year. Charles Barkley's vaccination comments. Now, I kind of remember a certain aspect of that being, well, the NBA athletes should just cut the line because they're more important. And that is, and that again, that, that was when back before, any anybody had really gotten vaccinated other than uh, medical professionals. So we kind of took to that uh, indignantly, I should say. And just to go through some of the others, Kurt Schilling. Now, we all know that Kurt Schilling basically came out and I think it was his last year on the ballot, possibly. And he, uh, and he didn't get in or he didn't get in the year before. Like, I don't want to be on the ballot. Well, take your political BS and shove it to the curb. We had actually, yeah, we had actually talked about, even though it feels like a million years ago, when Tiger Woods had actually uh, crashed his car, and th- that ended up that ended up being a. It's funny because we closed the year with him and we opened the year with him. I mean, there's so many moments. The NBA All Star Game, which probably was one of the funnier moments, not for uh, the public, but for us, when I decided to go out on a limb and make a great PSA for the All Star Game. <laughs> of course, we had to do. We had to deal with social issues as well. We were talking about uh, when the Derek Chauvin trial verdict came down. That that's part of the package as well, and uh, the murder of Dante Wright uh, in in I think yeah, it's in Minnesota. Yes, that we were talking. We ended up having to talk about that, and it and it's not necessarily. I mean, we felt like we had to not not to get too inside baseball here, but we felt like we had to address it. Yes, it was something that was important. You have to remember, sports is a fun place when games are going well, when the sports are at an all-time high. You get to go to the games, you get to cheer for your favorite athletes, and and fans get to enjoy it all. But there's a there's a sentimental side to sports, and you have to respect when certain issues come up in life, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can't just pretend that everything is sunshine and rainbows. And it definitely was not over the course of 2021. But you'll see that as as we start to go through it. Piece and piece. one of the other ones, speaking of the NBA, Adam Silver's response to the Stop Asian Hate campaign and Jeremy Lin being called coronavirus. Which, that- is, just as, which is just as tin-eared as, as it sounds, if you forgot that happened. 
Yeah, it just is an interest, and also the MLB moving the All Star game out of Atlanta. Also, ended so up going, you which ended up going pretty well in the end, but again, we'll see. So, just this is just segment one of three in this episode two of the best of Empty the Bench. There's a lot of great moments between Nick Federa, myself, and Tom Albano. So, just stay here. You're going to get to see a lot of clips. And then when those are over, we'll go through part two, which is mid about midway through the year of this episode. So, stay with us and we'll be right back. So, I think for the longest time, People have been saying, "Oh, well, that's just Charles." He said, "He says what he he says what he means." It just whatever pops in his head. But you need to understand something, people. What we just saw here was the words of a great A, old fashioned, all American dick. He is athletes who make millions, and because they pay more taxes, that they should get the COVID. They should be able to cut in line. No. Our healthcare workers are the ones that matter. That a life and death situation, you can't tell me that athletes deserve to get this COVID vaccine more than nursing home uh, residents, more than medical assistants, doctors, frontline workers, everybody else. The immunocompromised. Charles, they should suspend you from TNT. I'm calling uh, right now. After Kurt Schilling made a tweet pretty much in support of the insurrection in D.C. that, you know, this writer, I forget who, uh, wants to remove his name. And maybe there uh, were a couple. Uh, Mike Missinelli. Mike Missinelli. Thank you. And if and, I, and if I, yeah, go ahead. As I say, and there may be a couple of more who want to rescind their votes. The big issue with this whole situation is that you have a reputation, Kurt Schilling. Of being a political hack. I'm sorry. He's a political hack from the standpoint of he had his career as an athlete. Then he's like, oh shit, wait a minute. I don't have anything to do once my career is over. If Schilling goes in and then let's, and then you know my concern about next year, about like if Alex Rodriguez doesn't get in, but Big Poppy does. I feel like they all, they if, all have to get in. If Schilling and Pop, Big Poppy get in, you have to put A Rod, you have to put Bonds, you have to put Clemens. Y you have to. They had said, all right. We're not playing any games. We're, uh, we're not going to play an all star game. We're not going to just company. have a. We're just going to have a five day break, is what I remember. Right. So, all of a sudden, the news comes out. We're going to play the game in Atlanta, and it's going to be the dunk competition, the skills competition, and the NBA All Star game all in, in one, one day. In one day. Now, are you kidding as, me? As much of a progressive league as the NBA is, there there is that fine line where you know. They bow to something. They bow to uh, mainly uh, the green. They bow it's to the it. Same, I'll give you a hint. It's the same color as my shirt. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> excuse me. That The NBA is just looking at the bottom line and not caring about the players. Well, the players rejected it because they don't want to deal with delays because what the real problem is, some of the players have already bought their places down in Tampa and in uh, Arizona because they, they start to train early. So that was the big issue. So the players are like, eh, no, I'll pass. Thanks. If you're going to say no to this, we can say yes to. Considering that this is the last year of the CBA. They're looking to pick a fight. I've said yeah. this many times. The two sides are picking a fight. And by the way, and I've said this to the guys off the show, I'll say it now. Tony Clark is probably one of the worst MLBPA leaders I've ever seen. I, like, I, guys, by the signs of these things, it looks like a lockout is going to happen. And And yeah. if that happens... If that happens, and if and if like last week we had said, you know, like one of these guys, like Big Poppy, got in, but the rest didn't. Baseball's reputation. You think 1994 was bad? It's never going to come back. Well, I said something else to you guys, which was if they lose uh, next season, I th essentially it affects two seasons because if one season if they don't play, you're going to get crap because these guys are not playing. If baseball cancels the entire 2022 season, I, I will be honest, it will dip into hockey level territory. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. The guy is worth millions upon millions, maybe even billions of dollars at this point. It's not like he's going out there for money and he's desperate for money. Yeah, his legacy is secure. His well, wallet, his wallet is nice and fat. I don't know if I'd say his legacy is 100% clear with the cheating scandal, with getting caught with the uh, the prescription pills, 
I wouldn't say his legacy but is 100. People are still going to refer to him as the greatest golfer of all time. Whether that's true is up for debate. But people are still going to be referring to him as the goat. Well, am the I one wrong you know, or am I or am I right or am I wrong? No, you're well, right. He'll, he'll, he'll be in the debate as the, for the goat. I would say the the goat debate in golf will always be him. Uh, Jack Phil. 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 Yes. Jack Nichols. The one thing I will say here, if Tiger does not play again, the sport is going to become irrelevant. I think the sport has already become irrelevant. To be you know, but people are saying like, oh, Tiger's hurt. And like, they really desperately need him back. They do desperately need him back. It's I, not understand, a I understand. First of all, I understand what you're saying about, you know, Tiger, you know, that Tiger needs to be there and for the game to have relevance. And I understand that George, the likes of like Rory McIlroy and Jordan Spieth are trying their hardest to basically be golf's new stars. But I, but I would say, I would say, but I think golf kind of already has been on the decline. I think it has been on the decline to be honest with you since that first Tiger controversy. I think if Tiger walks away from this now, which I think he will, because again, he doesn't need to prove anything anymore and his health is more important. The golf, the sport has basically been a flat line. The problem is there's no, technically there's really no retirement in golf. You could play golf until you're 75 years old if you really wanted to. You can, so play, you can play golf until your arms and legs don't move anymore. <clears throat> right. So that that's the way I would leave it. Uh, unfortunately, the sport is going to become irrelevant. Go ahead, golf fans, come after me. I don't care. But that it, it, the truth is, if you don't have Tiger Woods, the sport is not worth watching. And you know what? I'm tired of this shit from Commissioner Adam Silver not paying attention to things when they happen. We're dealing with all these other issues. We're dealing with an All Star game that's coming up in March. We had it a should China, be happening. We had a China issue where basically China shunned the NBA, which is probably the biggest. Uh, country in the sport that and, helps and, and I'm sorry for saying this but I this is one of those things I can't resist and not say for a league that is supposedly progressive for a league that is activist and so anti-racist you know like, supportive of Black Lives Matter you can't say that and then go you bully the Asian American community you, you can't, can't do that you this is not this is not San Francisco in the 1890s. The N, the NBA is absolutely exposing itself, like you were just saying with all their controversies and this for the absolute crap show that it is of a league. You really, you really do need to put a pin in this crap right over. And this right is all. And and I know you guys were right asking. Now. You guys were asking me this whose fault it is. It's Adam Silver's fault. I don't want to well, hear. I, the reason why I did that is because I didn't know it was coming from the players. I thought it was coming from the fans. No, no. He no cannot... I didn't realize. No, if that's the case, then they they need to be suspended. Adam, Adam, Adam Silver. Adam Silver is basically allowing a lot of shit to happen. I mean, look, play, we can debate about player focused league all, uh, until the cows come home. We can do that, but you know what? This. There is a clear difference between right behavior and wrong behavior. And if you don't know which one this falls under, you're just as big of an idiot. And you, you, I, I swear to God, you, you may be as dumb as a bag of rocks. All the sports. The NBA started it. Then the NHL followed. MLB followed. All the sports followed. And then we see something like this, and the NBA doesn't react right away. Oh, we have to – Mike Bass, who I think is one of their head of media and VP for the NBA, basically came out and said that we need to go gather some more information on it. Hello! What more information is there to gather? It There's a, a video out there with an anti-slur in it. He he says it. Like, I, I don't know what – What else, else is there to gather? What else is there to investigate? It's right – Nick, this is like something you would say. This It's like right in front of your face. There's a lot of problems with this situation, and I'm having a hard time. And like Nick said, we got to feel sympathy because we don't know what's real and what's not. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know. This could have happened. This absolutely could have happened. Right. And, yeah, but I feel for, that's, that's the thing. I feel for the victims, but yet in this case, I also still feel for Deshaun only because yeah. we don't know what's going yeah, on. I, we don't. We don't know what's true and what's not, and we can't. Say that without taking into context everything that's going on, everything about this lawyer and the Texans, and, and everything about this lawyer. That yeah, but at the same time, yeah, but at the same yeah. time, 
what's so bizarre about this whole thing as a lawyer, you don't, like I said before, you don't go on social media and say that you're going to put out a case against Deshaun Watson or any athlete or any. That was, yeah, that was also very bizarre. This was nothing but a business decision. They knew the only thing they care about is not black or white, but green. People were going to get upset and not spend money to go there or to, uh, or, or to, or to watch the game. Well, it, well, bad for them. Well, if you're gonna go on to uh, that <laughs> route with Manfred and company, I, I'll stay my opinion out. Then, I think this was in part. I think this was in part because Manfred is trying to number one raise his public image, and number two, trying to soothe. <laughs> let's, say, let's say soothe tensions between him and the players and the union. The one thing I want to say is, first of all, this does not make Rob, Rob Manfred look better. I'm going to say that up front, right off the bat. I actually think, because Tom and I were discussing this before the episode, is this something to do with the Players Association? Because they're having this years-long battle, and they have a collective bargaining agreement that's expiring after this season, and we're probably going to be in a lockout once this like, season is over. Well, what like the I heck said, are we well, going to do? Well, like, I, like I said, he probably... It probably was a business decision like Nick was talking about, but I think there can be an ulterior motive. We're all in agreement that, that the bill is a stupid bill. and But putting that aside, we must understand that this does not make Rob Manfred look like anything other than what he always is, which is a shameless, craven opportunist. In the wake of the um, shooting of Dante Wright in uh, Brooklyn Center in Minnesota, um, Actually, he uh, yeah the killing of Dante right by uh, Brooklyn Center uh, uh, police uh, the accidental shooting but the the uh, Minnesota sports teams uh, meaning the Twins and the uh, the Timberwolves I think also they canceled their games in the immediate aftermath of the uh, of the shooting and uh, I mean I can't I I can just say right off the bat that I don't think that it was. I don't have a problem with it. I, I really don't. I mean, we've seen this before. I mean, it might have been more trouble than it was worth to have to play a game because the community was already on edge. The players were heartbroken, as I'm sure, uh, which I absolutely 100 percent understand. Would you want to? Would you want? Would you want to to take a field and, and play a silly children's game when the city's about to go up like a tinderbox? See what people don't realize is when we had the whole bubble situation in the NBA and we had the shooting with Jacob Blake and the NBA players all came together in unison, were kneeling during the games, were wearing the Black Lives Matter t-shirts and, and uh, warm-ups. And what people need to realize is that these are major problems going on around the world. And... We can't seem to come together as a society when it comes to handling these situations. So I don't blame that the Twins postpone their game, that the Timberwolves postpone their game. It's called standing up for unity. We're dealing with another shooting of a 20-year-old. Less than 10 miles away from where another cop is being put on trial for putting his knees on the neck of another black guy whose families actually knew each other, strangely enough. Ask yourself why you think this keeps happening. Justice was finally served on a situation that was oh, totally... It was time. This took three weeks, but it, they only deliberated for 11 hours and came up with a verdict. So they, they I, did the I, right what's, thing. What's weird is also I heard that they were going to announce, like, around, like, 4 o'clock here or so, that they were going to announce it the next day. But then all of a sudden, an hour later, all the verdicts... All of a sudden, was, like, nothing's happening, out. nothing's happening, nothing's happening. Then everything happens. Well, then you had the other issue. When one trial ends, another incident happened on the another street right after. Happened, yeah, less, less than 10 miles away. So but, for if the NBA canceled a few games a week, I would have said, okay, I understand. It's kind of like the bubble situation when they had that whole thing go down. But if they canceled the whole season, I would have gotten on them for that. NBA players were pretty upset with the fact of how the schedule is because if you guys remember the second half of the season this has been a little more 
creative, I guess, maybe a we word. We talked about it. Nick and I talked about this last week where Jamal Murray, the all-star guard of, of the Nuggets, got hurt because the Nuggets were playing too many games in a row. They wanted the second half of the season to be flexible because of any problems, you know, with the with COVID. As you said, and if they had canceled it, if they had canceled even a day or two's worth of games, it, like, you know, to because of the social justice, but then still complain about it, about the scheduling, I – I think, guys, that blame falls on Adam Silver. Everybody yelled bubble because we were still in the middle of the second wave of COVID. Everybody, you know, there was mass positives around the country. And yet, for some reason, the NBA decided we were going to venture forward, even though, as far as I know, they don't have the expanded rosters and practice squads like the MLB and the NFL do. And they just have the protocols in place and we saw how pro- problematic the pro- the protocols, you know, were in the first NBA, half of the season. NBA. Yeah. So the NBA has just been, let's call it for what it is, the NBA has just been a massive mess this season. Welcome back to episode two of the Best of Empty of the Bench. These are the top sports headlines of 2021. Now, that was just a taste of what went on so far at the beginning of the year. Now... It's time to head into May through August. Now we're talking about the middle of the year. And there's a lot of interesting moments. Will Aaron Rodgers play? Now, the irony that we're talking about at the time, whether Aaron Rodgers was going to play due to his contract situation. And now look at look where he is now. It still hadn't really it still hadn't really resolved at that point. And you know what? If you were to, if you were taking the if you were taking the knowledge that you have now and brought it back then, I mean it's not like things have gone away, but still, that wasn't the only controversy that we went through uh, this year. We were also talking about the MLB cracking down on sticky stuff. Which, yeah. Hey, Garrett Cole, we're talking to you. Which be- which became a thing, and we were taught we, of course, had to bring up COVID. As every time something w- something would pop up with COVID, or somebody would do something stupid, flaunting the rules, or positive tests, or um, the response not being adequate enough, we had to talk about. It. Right. And of course, it can't be an ETB episode without LeBron James controversy either. <laughs> Absolutely. And I can tell you one of my personal favorite, um, uh, one of my personal fa- favorite uh, moments from this year is when we were actually able to speak to uh, Michael uh, Duarte, which is what you, which is what you saw uh, last week. Yeah, and that uh, that that interview yeah, was great. Actually, yeah, we actually do talk about Trevor Bauer, so this is the context leading up to that interview. And also, we had to talk about the Olympics. We all remember that controversy that we that rabbit hole we had to go down. And now, ironically, the we the, end up back where we started with more controversy around the Olympics. And now that the NHL players are up, well, the NHL is opting out of going to the Olympics. So now it's kind of full circle if you think about it. Yes, it is. And then you had the uh, Ohio. Oh, that was uh, Bauer also. But yeah, yeah, there's a lot going on. There was a lot of controversy. This is the more controversial than the first part of this episode. So you had Aaron Rodgers, you had LeBron James, you had Trevor Bauer. You also forgot your rant on Cole Beasley, if you remember that as well. Ah, uh, yes, yes, we have that. And by the way, still moron for not getting a vaccine, and now he's out due to COVID health and safety protocols in the NFL. Hey, so, who could have called that one? Hey, I think it was me. I think that was the Magic 8-Ball that called that one. Anyway, so go check these out. Go check out part two. Like I said, Aaron Rodgers, LeBron James, Cole Beasley, Trevor Bauer, the Olympics, and more. We'll be right back for the final part of the best of Empty the Bench. Top headlines of 2021. Roll them, Smokey. And I'm tired of this whole thing where the quarterback in the NFL or the star player pitcher in Major League Baseball or Francisco Lindor in the Mets, which we'll get to, or I don't know, take your pick at this point. Let Stop giving the stars the power. This is what I said in last week's intro. Stop. But, but I think in the NFL, you really don't see stars having you, the power. You really, yeah, you you, really you, I think I think we even talked about this on like, draft night or the or last week's episode that there's very few people in the NFL that might have LeBron James style power and I guess Aaron Rodgers is kind of one of them when you consider like the last drama that happened the uh, Mike McCarthy ended up fired from the Packers now with the Cowboys and, and and I think 
as much as, you know, I don't like uh, how Schefter kind of sat on it and ESPN kind of waited till draft day, I guess I'm kind of not surprised because it, it goes back to what we said in that when doesn't Aaron Rodgers have a problem with the Packers in the offseason? It's it's just it's a cycle. It's a cycle. It seems like every offseason something this, this comes been, up. Yes, yeah, something comes up, whether it's a it's a problem with the coaching, whether it's a problem with he doesn't agree with personnel decisions. Or he doesn't or, or he doesn't or he's mad at management for not getting him weapons that he needs. Or yeah, but, even drafting, uh, as we saw with, with Jordan Love. Uh, a couple of, uh, about a year or so ago. Yeah, but he's not the only star that we've seen do this he's over the only, years. I would say the only three I can think of off the bat that have that kind of LeBron James esque the league, you know, shifts around them is Rogers, really Brady, Rogers, Brady, and maybe Russell Wilson. By the way, Tom Brady wasn't really technically having issues. I think he was just looking for a change of scenery at this point. And, and that's you know what? why he kept it on the down low. But, but you know what? It kind of worked out for Brady. Yeah, yeah, it worked. It worked. And by he, the way, and I said last week that this is what Rogers wants to do. He wants to be able to plug and play wherever he goes. What do you mean? It's been addressed with the team. If it was addressed, then he should have been sitting on the sideline in, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, cold on the sideline in the play in the playing game, right? Because this is a major violation of every sort of NBA COVID nineteen protocol rule that there is. Well, speaking as kind of the de facto amateur epidemiologist here on Empty the Bench, uh. I really feel like it is again. How should how should I put this? I don't feel like this is a specifically a LeBron James problem, as it is an NBA problem. In that he, uh, meaning Adam Silver, does not want his people, does not want the shall I call it the money goose to be to be slaughtered. No, this has. The it's an NBA problem, but now it's become a LeBron problem because like Tom said, before we started the show, if they ask you, did you get the vaccine and you say you're not going to answer it? That's BS. I mean, you, you mean technically to... don't have to answer because you technically don't it, have it, to it, answer. But here's, He's a Nick. public figure, Nick. Time out. The problem we have guys is just the last week or two week or two ago, we were discussing an issue going on in major league baseball. Where seven or eight Yankee player, Yankee members from players and staff members, plus over in San Diego, probably the face of baseball now, Fernando Tatis Jr., all had to enter COVID nineteen protocols in spite of them getting a vaccination because they had come, you know, come in contact with people who had tested positive. And actually, Nick, if we quote, if we go back to the intro, we took a quote from you where we were saying that that situation was proof positive. That COVID vaccines work. work. So here's the problem that you have. So yes, he could have produced either, you know, he could have been vaccinated or he could have produced the negative test. Adam Silver went on uh, Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin, the ESPN Radio Morning Show the other day, and said, we're running a full season starting in October. We're going so back, we're, yeah, we're, we're going back well, to normal schedule. Well, I, I will say, well, I'm not surprised by that because the NFL has stated also that they want to go a full season. But how is that possible? We're not up to our herd immunity. How can we be doing that? Again, because herd immunity really doesn't mean much to these people. It's about serving the economic interests and not the public health interests, which go, is, again, a tragedy. Go ask the UFC, Tom. You know all about this, that they're basically in Texas doing full shows. And then I Money heard the WWE. More than human lives. I, and, and, now, I, and now WWE, that's yes. What, that, that's, how, that's how they think. So, but but at the least with the W, but at least I'll say the UFC I won't defend because we've seen Dana's takes on uh, on COVID. But at least with the WWE, they have also been promoting the COVID vaccine. And again, the NBA and LeBron James have a have you know they could promote the vaccine, get help get more people vaccinated, but they choose not to. And on top of that, and Nick said I was crazy. I'm going to make this statement anyway that LeBron should be banned for the rest of the playoffs. I don't know if I would go that far, but he needs to be in protocol. How how many instances of the NBA, you know, like Nick, Kevin Durant, when he was pulled mid-game, 
or he was a big game. And in fact, it happened to Justin Turner when they're in the World Series. Even we though we talked about that last week, yeah. <laughs> right. But LeBron does not deserve special treatment. I'm sorry. I know the guys probably think uh, this goes with my LeBron James hate culture, but I think I have legitimate beef here. That no, I was saying no, here you I do. Usually, yeah, here in this case you do. This here is you legitimate. do, but I'm, I wouldn't carry it that far. But, but that's but that's just me. I, I mean, but he needs but he needs to be placed in protocols. I'm sorry. But so if I you don't come out and say what happened, or he goes in protocol. Well, no, actually, I would say you don't play until you tell us what happened. That that's what I would do. Pete Alonso is saying that basically, he's for he's for it. He yeah, has no problem for. with pitchers. Well, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, F it. Just let them use this stuff rather than trying to police every player. And now they're talking about setting up checkpoints for the starting pitcher. So does that mean that when they come out of their start, you're going to have to go frisk a starting pitcher when they come out of a yeah, game? Metal detector to make sure they don't have. <laughs> Oh so, no no no! Um, uh, no 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 no! I was just eating rice krispie treats, which is also also kind of ironic because you know we're talking about pitchers using the substances, you know, for like grip reasons. Like, Pytor, Pytor, what about Pytor? They're all hitters? against this. They just didn't enforce them. I mean, do we need to go all the way back to what was it, nineteen? George Brett, yeah, nineteen eighties. Again, this is a demon of their own making. You guys understand that, right? Yes. I'm just tired of the way this is. F it. Just let them use the substances. I don't care. And and the managers are going to be, as I, I I can't speak for the Tony La Russa's of the world, but I, there will be managers who basically will not complain because if this is true, you know, and the common belief is where everybody in Major League Baseball these days is a cheater and they're all using it, they're not going to sell their own players, their, the possibility of their own teammates out to call out another person the which biggest is, yeah which is why it's unfair to do it to garrett cole because to do that and not and only single him then out, let's then let's check the twins pitchers yeah, let's check let, let's check no, everybody forget twins and yankees you might as well just check all of major league baseball that, that, that's what I'm saying. No, and but, the minor and, league system you might as well check the minor league system while you're at it also and, and we've had and by the way alex uh, cora alex cora has basically come out and said he's not going to say anything because he's not in the right to say anything and he's right because imagine if Cora or Hinge complained about it'll be this. the worst day in the world of like political television and entertainment television and sports television if we see or late night television if we see a story that Alex Cora and AJ Hinge come out and complain about this it's it going to be lead, hypocrite lead, of the century it would re lead to the literal death of irony on one hand this seems like you know Roger Goodell trying to get all of his players vaccinated on the flip, I don't know if all of this is going to be enforced. I, I think teams are going to be, you know, very willing to let some of the some of these things slip through the cracks. It's because especially if you have players like Cole Beasley. Now, context is necessary. Mr. Beasley of the Buffalo Bills put out a statement yesterday. I, I think it was a it was it was it a medium thing or was it was it just on his notes app on his I, iPhone? I, I thought I just saw him put it out on Twitter. That's where I, I think thought. I think what happened did. is he I think what happened is he did the I'll put this in notes, take a screenshot and upload uh, it and to then all my social media. Saying essentially, I'm paraphrasing here, but I'm not going to get the vaccine. I refuse to. I'm going to live my life and I'm not going to be afraid of this thing. If I get sick, I get sick, I'll build up immunity. Now, I'm no epidemiologist, nor do I play one on TV, nor do I even look like anybody who might be an epidemiologist. But I'm going to, you know, venture a guess and say, that's not how it works! Well, that's not how it works! It's not how immune systems work. The one you know, thing you know, I... You know how, pe how, people would, how people who died in pandemics in the past, you know what they wish they had? Vaccine. Vaccines! Magic liquid that would make you not get sick. It's amazing, isn't it? So you know what you're basically saying to us, Cole? It's, I don't care if you die. I'm going to do what I want to do. Well, And I feel bad for the uh, for the other teammates that are, and he's not going to do well, it. Well, no, I was going to say is congratulations, Cole. Uh, I hope you have fun still wearing your mask, still having to be physically distanced. You know, it's, it's nice over here on the fully back side. I was gonna You're say, on my freedom. <laughs> your freedom to get sick. I was gonna say is, is that, that it? Your, your freedom to get sick. Go ahead, go ahead. Watch, watch what happens. I don't expect to hear the words, you know, 
sex and rough with her and everything and can send all in the choking. same sentences and choking all in the same sentences. Now, as I now, this is not a kink shaming place. You know, yes, we, we, we don't we, we don't <laughs> we don't judge here on empty the bench. But the problem is, and I, and I think, look, we are not really qualified to speak on issues of consent, seeing as how and what women feel is appropriate since the three of us, last I checked, have all the penises. So that being the case... I don't I, have girlfriends. You really, I mean, you really don't, yeah, you really don't. It's not for us to say what a woman should or should not feel is appropriate. It's but really up to them. I need to point out one thing, which you guys both said, which if he's, he should have kept his mouth shut after this whole alleged situation, then he comes out and says, well, she wanted it rough. Why are you saying that? Nick, Nick, that you're it saying always is made worse by the athlete opening his mouth. Nick, or is you're, or not. you're saying that Trevor Bauer should have kept his mouth shut. No, no, no. Oh, wait Trevor a Bauer. Wait a minute, that was he's physically incapable of wait closing a his mouth. That was going to be my next point of contention. Which Trevor Bauer has a reputation now. Could this have been? part of the downfall that he has a reputation of certain points that maybe people are saying, well, he's already an asshole to begin with. Maybe we do believe that he could have done this. I mean, the fact that not a lot of us are surprised that Trevor Bauer has been investigated for this sort of thing. I mean, it doesn't surprise me because Trevor Bauer, and I'm trying to think of a, a way to say this that is a little bit more, genteel about than what I have in my head. Um, Trevor Bauer's not the nicest guy in the league. The issue here is the IOC really shouldn't have been holding these games at all. No. You can just skip it. You can just skip it and es then come back when everybody's Especially, Nick, 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 they would have money out of their pocket. Nick, especially when you consider, you know, we made the decision 10 days now, or even a little more than 10 days before, all of a sudden now we're not going to have a limp. We're not going to have spectators at the Olympics. Guys, this is going to be awkward as all hell. You know, watching an MLB game where, you know, everything's fine. We have, you know, vaccinated people at the games, you know, or, or we had those pods at the unvaccinated. And then we turn to the Olympic and it's just empty arena. It's guys, baseball, flash, baseball, flashback to March 2020 all over again. Right, guys, baseball is going to make its big Olympic comeback for a one-off. Softball is going to make a one-off. Skateboarding, karate are all going to debut, and silence. And Did, you know, and, and you know what the problem is? Not getting that. Now I don't know whether the lack, the low vaccination rate in Japan is because yeah, I, I we don't know the we or, don't know Japan's we don't yeah, know. Japan's I, I really don't know the I really don't know the situation here, so I'm not going to judge. But the IOC should have been able to step in and help with that. What I mean, the you, IOC? You, have you the think the IOC is going to help with something? Wait you a have minute. the infrastructure to help people get vaccinated. The IOC is a corrupt organization from the from the highest. Yes, step of the yes I know. They, yeah, I guess I know. They make Sep, uh, they make Sep Blatter and FIFA look like they, they make them look like choir boys. To be honest. <laughs> with you. Wow. But but still the I I, I just feel like this was patently avoidable yet commerce once again as commerce often does take precedence over human health and human life but who's going to want to watch the olympics when there's nobody watching in person how awkward that's going to be and this is what happens and I'm... this is the consequence cause and effect him being dragged to a wedding he didn't want to go to I, we... I mean he was just can we just play the world's saddest violin for Aaron Rodgers? Because you know what? The guy has made, what, $150 million plus? I mean, can we stop? Like, I, I, can, I, can I stretch <clears throat> that to the Green Bay Packers, you know, the small violin? Because you had every opportunity the last five seasons to get him help and get him to another Super Bowl, and you failed time and time and time and time. And time, time. And I need to time. say one thing. I need to say one thing, which is – he needs to stop being a baby. Every team is looking to draft their next quarterback replacement. Then again, I, I don't think that it was really about the money with Aaron Rodgers. I think it was he wanted to be the LeBron. Major League Baseball has dealt with many more instances. If you look back five to seven years ago, domestic violence was not really covered in Major League Baseball. All of a sudden... Not covered at all. It, it after, almost, almost not at all. Once it started, I think Jose Reyes was one of the first. Then it was Aroldis Chapman. And now we're seeing this. 
Trevor Bauer is starting a movement to the point where domestic violence is now a problem. And who did we see? A Nationals player just got uh, Starling Castro was another Starling one. Castro. So domestic violence is a problem. And for people to say major violence league, is a problem and, and Manfred is going to have to create is he's going to have to do something about this and quick. No, you want to know what my answer is? Fire Manfred! Because Manfred can't run the sport. I know Manfred can't run the sport, but but in the in the interim, in the immediate future, I'm talking about I'm talking about within the next couple of weeks. If you know that this is the, that this is that this has merit to it, and you know for a fact that this is not um uh, that 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 this is legitimate. Of course, I have to use the. Uh, you're not going to use the big A allegedly, but I am. But if you know something that we do not about Trevor Bauer, you must suspend him because here's the other thing: he's getting paid. Yeah, of course he's getting paid because he's on administrative leave. He's not suspended. And you know what? And it's like we keep saying, Nick, he keeps getting his administrative leave, like you said, kicked down the curb like a can. You know what? Yeah. Stop with the lies. Rob, stop with the lies. You know something is going on. And if you're not going to do something, then the other parts of the administration of Major League Baseball need to do something because you're not going to. What other? But the buck stops with him, right? I'm saying that he's inept. He can't do his job. I, I know he's. Yeah, I know he's inept. That, that's, a get, that's a given in this situation. Welcome back to the best of Empty the Bench Top Sports. Headlines of 2021, Nick Federa, Nick Morgison, Tom Albano behind the scenes. Here we go. So this is more recent. This is now what we are covering from September to the end of the year. And a lot of it, and a lot of it is like, you, as you would say, engineered to piss me off. Engineered oh. to piss both of us off because a lot of it had to do with COVID, it, uh, which again was a common theme throughout most of the year. But as we got into the back half of 2021, we started to see more controversy around vaccine mandates um, start to pop up around sports. And again, the various forces that were pushing and pulling against it. And I mean, not to say that there wasn't some whimsy to be had. I mean, we were definitely talking about the idiocy of crypto of crypto.com arena. That was always there to talk about. But we also saw Aaron Rodgers implode his own career by going on to the Pat McAfee show and and letting showing his whole ass essentially. Well, speaking of showing, we did have Togate during his press conference as well. Yeah, he he just wanted to show you which which piggies went to market. And by the way, I didn't realize that COVID toe, which I think he created on his own volition. By the way, I didn't realize COVID toe was a thing. Did you? Oh, I, I did. I just didn't think he. I just didn't think he'd have the he'd have the guts to do it. But to give you some of the other background. That this was also the beginning of NBA staff, not players, because of course players like the NFL, the players get way more rain than the rest of the employment that goes on in the world of professional sports. With a vaccination mandate, NBA and MBPA could not agree on a COVID vaccination agreement. Then we had the Rolling Stone article, if you remember that, Nick, where they basically yeah. first of all, I think I had a rant on that where I basically said, how did Rolling Stone end up with the insider information over ESPN or any other uh, media outlet that covers the NBA? Like I, like you said before, I mean, these stories were tailor-made to piss people off. To piss us off, I should say. That's true. And also, the Kyrie drama. And actually, if you go back to uh, episode 107, where you guys asked me, is he still uh, your boy? And I think uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm music uh, kind of told it all there. Yes, it did. We and also, it, yeah. Go and ahead. then we also had uh, the Ben Simmons 76ers drama, which, by the way, there are some rumors that trades could be on the way for that. But that's been a headache. Yes, it has been a headache. But we've also told, we also uh, took some time to talk about baseball, of course, being in the shadow of the lockout. A lot of, a lot of the stuff that we had to talk about was. Free agency, but again, the specter of the lockout was looming, and little did we know earlier in the year that this was going to happen. Well, Tom called it, but still. And by the way, I think one of my rants came back and bit me in the ass when it came to uh, Max Scherzer and the Mets. So just do, yeah, so just do what I do and just, just 
they preserve the right to be wrong. But who would have thought that Max Scherzer, of all people, who said he didn't want to play in New York? And it comes through in the footage. You'll see. I it mean, comes through just how shocked we all are. I mean, I literally said there's no way he's coming to New York. Of course, that bit me. That one kind of blew up on me at that point. Yeah, also, and then just to kind of finish up, unvaxxed NBA players not allowed in Canada when that story broke out. And that became a thing. It's like, you know, this. if there was a common theme to this year, if there was a bow to wrap all this up, it would pretty much just be things that are not supposed to be things becoming things. Yeah, and let's put it this way. We look at these moments more from our standpoint. So people who are going to be in the social media comments are going to be like, but that's not a top sports headline of the year. Well, it's not your show. It's ours. And we it's make from, content out of it. It's our when moment. You have, when you have a show, you get to decide, what, you get to decide what, what's on it. And by the way, if you want to have a show on our podcast network, Empty the Bench Podcast Network. Reach, reach out to us. And then if you want your own opinion, you get to be assholes like we do. See, so, it's so simple. It's the circle of life. The circle of life. Okay, I'm not going to go to the real in that so moment. Before we go into a full musical review, let's throw it to the last batch of clips. Right, we'll throw it to the last batch of clips, and when we come back, we'll wrap this all up with a nice uh, Christmas bow, and uh, hopefully Santa hasn't dropped any coal down your stocking in the meantime. So uh, we'll be right back. Good job, Adam Silver. Good job. You made rules where there could be both sides whether you could get a vaccine or not. You know what? We should cheer. We should cheer for Adam Silver because Adam Silver is totally not doing his job right. I mean, how is that different from any other day? I mean, it's a big... What the f***? What are we doing here? I mean, this is exactly what I... See, I've been pounding on this point for months. Where every everybody's every North American sports uh, vaccine policy is always half measures stacked up stacked up on top of more half measures, and there's no that's no way to end the pandemic. Now, now I now just thinking about like all the staff, the players, and such. So we were just saying before because we'll get to MLB who has a similar situation. When you talk about like training staff, like the athletic trainers, the physical. A specialist for them, it makes sense. You need to be vaccinated. You should be vaccinated if you're going to be treating, you know, if you're kind of in a doctor or physician role where basically you are treating these players, their injuries, all their, uh, all their energy, their aches and pains, their aches and pains. Yeah. That's the best way to describe it. So it makes sense. But I mean, if a player, so if a player ends up being, you know, if they end up going out somewhere before a playoff game, they somehow get it, and then all of a sudden they're on the court, and the positive test is not. What if the positive test is not known until the day after the game? You know what? Or, or during the game? Where or during the game? Turner. Wait, you mean like uh, the Red Sox or like the Dodgers? Uh, you know what? I'm going to create a new term. We just interned these athletes. Okay. Because that's what we're doing here. We're taking tests too close to the game. Is this going to happen now in the NBA where we're taking tests too close to the game and we're going to see players being whisked, whisked off the field or court because they're not told what their COVID result is? So you would think that players at this point would be smart enough to know. Well, not necessarily smart enough, but would be empathetic enough to other people's plight that they would you know, are you not, kidding not want to get sick but then if that happened then candy and rainbows would start shooting out of my ass Wait. but that's not going to happen is it Wait. i'm gonna say something you usually say to me nick are you new here with this situation exactly exactly yeah yeah, I, I, yeah. If ifs and buts or candy, candy and nuts, and we nuts. would all we have, all a, have merry a merry Christmas. Christmas. And it's three months, of, and we're three months from Christmas, by the way. And but and, well, yeah, you know what? I'm going to need a, a new brain for Christmas because I'm going to have to get over the NBA bullshit at this point. But I mean, I, Ky Kyrie Irving, Kyrie Irving really doesn't surprise me because he he really fancy he really fancies himself an astronomer too, and I <laughs> really expect a flat man over there. To understand, to understand the nuances of epidemiology? 
I just I'm trying to get get myself together here before I. He's end. broken. He uh, if it's not if it's not Mister the Earth is flat, it's Mister vaccines are going to magnetize me. And well, wasn't Kyrie the one that also used uh, what's that stuff he would spread around on the court before the game? That what that truck? The spice stuff. Remember he was doing that. What? Like curry or something? Like he uh, was. Which he's a weird guy. He's a weirdo. Yes, and you know what? Again, uh, he's a weird guy. But usually, it doesn't endanger other people's health. But COVID, uh, getting COVID when you're not vaccinated and spreading it to other people, that's a public health crisis. That involves other people. That's what happens when weirdness meets just just selfishness. This whole situation is nuts. Get to the table. Get a vaccination agreement. I mean, heck, for crying out loud, and we're going to talk about it in a second, LeBron James came out and said he finally got the vaccine. He finally came out after all this time. How much you want to bet his PR people after the Rolling Stone story was was published, how much you want to bet they, they went to him and said, can you please just tell them you were vaccinated? Hey, I'm not, I'm not implying that he 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 wasn't he lied he wasn't any lied about it. I'm saying that can you at least just stop playing footsie and just say you know what, come out unequivocally. I got vaccinated and you should too. Hey, LeBron, uh, I think I hear you in the distance. What do you think about the vaccine? Get the f- out of here. I mean, don't you think you should have done this a little earlier than yeah. this? Don't you think you should have been having PSAs? Uh, uh, you know. The way, the way Jordan used to do, of course, that was just saying. No, that. Oh, no. Nick, Nick, I'm going to say it again. Are you new here? Like, again, but it was, was it dumb of me to hope? Well, then, I'm it, there's thinking. no hope. There's no hope with the NBA and the MBPA. They, and you know what? I'm going to blow your mind right now. They are below the MLB and the MLBPA. I would go ahead. That's a uh, little bit of a low bar. I don't know if I would set. Um, but yeah, I think because they will try to limbo over it, but but still, but that, I think, that, but I think it tough. is, but I think this is a little bit of another uh black eye for this league that's been going back because we've been talking about how the NBA could skyrocket in popularity, but it has just hurt itself over the last few years. First, with the China situation, then when the COVID uh vaccine first came out, and we had all these rumors that the NBA wanted to jump the line. And then you had the NBPA. Well, we've known for a while about the players being very, uh, very playing footsie on this situation with the vaccine. And now we got all this. And now we yeah, got this about a potential mandate. I'm glad that Andrew Wiggins listened to my little home shopping network demonstration last week. That well, was such a classic moment. Well, on this it, well according to Mr. According to Mr. Wiggins, it was not a matter of, you know, he's convinced or anything. It's a matter of he just wants to play. <laughs> and, and I'm sure, I'm sure the salary reduction. Why you always lying? Oh my God! Stop fucking lying! I'm sure, I'm sure the salary reduction had something to do with it. I'm, I'm pretty sure about that too. Yes. I mean, when you're being threatened to miss 41 games, which is half the season, 82 games, 41 home games, 41 away games, 41 games is a lot of money to lose. It Plus, is. So now. I need to understand something about this whole uh, these mandates, like here in New York and California and such. So, and, and how it relates to the NBA, not in general. So, the home games they would not be allowed to play. But let's say Kyrie goes to the Garden to, for a Nets Knicks game, can he can play? No. No. It's, what if he no. goes? So, so if he goes to Golden State for a Nets Warriors game, he can't play. So if Knicks he's not vaccinated. Knicks, Nets, and Golden State all have local. So technically, no. no so technically, then, Mister Morgison, that could be depending on how many times you play a certain team. That could be forty-two games. That it, could be forty-seven games. It's. I mean, since technically, you could only see him if he if he plays in Minnesota Timberwolves games or, or Houston Rockets. <laughs> right. The, the difference is the ones against Golden State are not going to matter as much because maybe you'll see them twice a year, maybe. But uh, but uh, playing across town with the, against the Knicks. That oh, against the Knicks. And within the Eastern Conference, it's going to matter. Right. right. Going to matter. Well, for the Knicks games because they're going to play the Knicks what like six seven times a year at least. Probably. So and then and the Nets. And the Nets, the who were just picked uh, by the general managers in that GM poll to be the favorites for the NBA championship. If Kyrie doesn't play those games, that 
that hurts that potential. You're saying it's not true. Then why are you making the statements in the first place that first you wanted to be private? And two, why are you saying these things if you're saying they're not true? Also, he understands that he's talking about the real world and everything. He understands that in terms of the team and the vaccine mandate, it is not an NBA or a team issue. Or, or if it is, it's bigger than that. It is that New York City is not allowing anybody into the arenas that is either not vaccinated or doesn't produce a negative test. Or in the case of the players, any or in case of the players in the home arenas, they have to be vaccinated. So you know what? It's, it's bigger than it's bigger than the NBA. I'm I'm tired of and, this whole and and what? no, I should I should say because it's bigger than the NBA and it's a hell of a lot bigger than Kyrie Irving. Well, uh, I'm frustrated. I'm done. Kyrie Irving should be suspended and banned from the, the NBA until he gets his shots for the COVID no, vaccine. No, no, he he's talking. The, what he was talking about, by the way, was also there are rumors report. There were rumors reported early in the week that because of the vaccine mandate and him not being allowed to play the team's decision, he was going to consider retirement. And guess what? Honestly, he should retire after be, not being there for the team. Last year, he was only there for like half the games for the last year or two, talking about how there are things bigger than basketball, despite the fact he was signed to some pretty big contracts. And now in this case, how he is just not going to be there for the team because of a selfish decision to not get the vaccine. Honestly, Kyrie, he's made his money. You're talking about $33 million. That's a lot of money. He's made his money. He has an NBA title. He was the sidekick to LeBron in 2016 in Cleveland. He he's hit the game winning shot. He had the game-winning shot. He's had his moments. Guess what? He's had a good career. I think the rate, the, the rate that he is going, maybe it's time to stop. My first reaction to this whole thing was, who the hell are you trying to fool? Who the hell are you trying to fool by saying that you're not mentally ready to play? You want to know why you're mentally not ready to play? Because you're a basket case! He's tanking his own trade value. You do realize that, right? The no, but one thing he wants, he's going to he's not going to be able to get. No, 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 no. Time out. Daryl Morey went on a Philadelphia radio station the other day and he said, "Get used to it. Strap in and get ready cuz you're not going anywhere." He actually went on a on a radio station and said that. So, guess what? Daryl Morey's in for the long haul. It's it's a dick measuring contest as Nick would say. And he'd say, who's going to win? And you know who's going to win? Contest. You know who's going to win? Daryl Morey's going to win every time. I mean, I wouldn't exactly put it in that term because I really don't want the mental image of Daryl Morey in a dick measuring contest. <laughs> no, but I'm sure However... Ben Simmons just signed a contract extension with the team last offseason. You think that he that uh, Daryl Morey is going to trade him now? There's no trade value for him now. I mean, it, I mean, it could be. There could be. I mean, you 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 referred to him yesterday last week as a headache, and how much more of the headache can they stand? And now, no, no, no. We, the, you know what this is going to turn into? This is going to turn into Dwight Howard and Van Gundy with the magic. And of course, of course, I must add as a caveat, I'm taking this. I'm working under the assumption that he actually just doesn't want to play, and he's not dealing with any kind of mental health issues. That, they, that they're trying to work through. Because if that's the case, then it's completely different. But yeah. since we don't know that, I'm just going to assume. No, no, no. Here's the deal. He doesn't have any mental issues. I'm tired of this. He does not have mental issues. You know what his mental issues are if he's having them? He can't survive in Philadelphia. That's the issues he's having. There's definitely a lot of critical thinking going on upstairs, Aaron Rodgers. Hey, I hey. gotta tell you, that, that's just a it's it's a bastion, an oasis of, of free thought. Thank you. Congratulations. I mean congratulations. Seriously. I, you've, I, done, you've done enough. I'm gonna steal a line from you, Nick. Like, what's next? Is he gonna talk about the earth being flat or the lizard people being real? He even pointed that out. He even said, I'm not like them. I'm a free thinker. By the way, don't give me the vaccine. I'm allergic. Well, which I'm willing to, which I'm willing to bet is a fucking lie. We'll get to that in a second. But first, look at all the failure. I mean, look at all the failure. The NFL is a failure. The Packers are a failure. Aaron Rodgers is a failure. Roger Goodell's a failure. Everyone's a failure. Go to the next clip. I mean, uh, uh, let's, not, let's get I'm to the allergy one. A bitch yet. Okay, so to set this one up. Aaron talks about 
I think it's called the RNA vaccines, which are the Pfizer the and the Moderna. Vaccine. I mean, mRNA vaccines, which are the Pfizer and the Moderna, two out of the three approved technically vaccines. So he says he can't get them. And the third one he won't get due to clotting, which is J&J. So let, let's hear that first. Okay. Simply the fact that I have uh, an allergy to an ingredient that's in the mRNA vaccines. So on the CDC's own website, it says, should you have an allergy to any of the ingredients, you should not get one of the mRNA vaccines. So those two were out already. So my only option was Johnson & Johnson. At this time, in the early spring, I had heard of multiple people who had had adverse events around getting the change. Nothing that was no deaths or anything, but just some really difficult uh, times and physical uh, uh, abnormalities around uh, the J and J shot, and then in mid-April, the J and J shot got pulled for clotting issues. Crypto.com, or first of all, a naming right that doesn't fly off the tongue. Hey, all right, we're heading to Crypto.com Arena. Who says that? Why don't you just call it Bitcoin Arena or Ethereum Arena? No, Bit no, no, but, but continuing yeah. on my point, because I'm not done. The fact that it hosts the Lakers and its history, the fact that it's the only NBA uh, arena that hosts the two teams, the Lakers and the Clippers. And the Clippers have had success in recent times. The Kings, the Los Angeles Kings, two-time Stanley Cup champions. 2012 becoming, I think it's the first NHL team to go from an eighth seed to win the Stanley Cup. With all that history, you know, that arena is always going to be the Staples Center to me, not the Crypto.com arena. And also, don't forget all the concerts and entertainment events that go on at Staples Center as well. That, that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. What's it called? I know. I know. With Madison Square Garden in the in the video games, that it's very rarely called Madison Square Garden. It's usually just called the New York Arena or the Knicks Arena. MSG. Right. But that, but that's the thing. MSG has has always been Madison Square Garden. So heaven forbid a whole new naming rights thing came in and it's like the something brand here arena at Madison Square. And it's like, no, it's always going to be MSG to me. Unless it's, unless the it's honest like, company presented, presents wait. it at Madison Square Garden. I, I mean, unless it's that, unless it's that side arena, that small arena where it's the Hulu theater, then okay, the Hulu theater at Madison Square Garden because it's again, not the main arena. Again, that's mostly entertainment events, but what I would say is for the most part, except for the Mets completely being fucking sellouts over calling the stadium city field, you're never going to, and Nick and I had this discussion also. I think we both agreed. You can never change the name of Yankee stadium. Never. If that happens. My heart will break in a thousand. And places. I made another point, which I think Nick agreed with was the Yankees are far and above the richest team in all of baseball. So he cried because he didn't spend $44 million plus a $4 million incentive to make it 48, but he goes out and spends $125 million. Good math. That's the new math, as my parents would say. And they're looking to add more specifically to their pitching to replace Matt's, and they're looking at Kevin Gozman and Max Scherzer. Okay. I'm going to dispel this rumor right now, okay? Max Scherzer is never coming to New York. Never. He has said, he, Max Scherzer has said he does not want to play in New York. No. I, I wish he would so he could join the Yankees. It's not happening. It's definitely not happening. I mean, look at all this money. Really? And, I, I, and you know what's the sick part? Is it even going to make a difference? Think about this. At, in their first season with Cohen as owner, you know, as as bad as the NL East was, even though the Braves only won 88 games and still won the World Series, you know, as bad as the NL East was, it, by the time of the All Star break, the Mets were what first place in the NL East. They it, held a, they held first place in the NL East for a good portion, and then absolutely collapsed after the All Star break and missed the playoffs. It's the 09 collapse all over again. Right, but that but that's my point. Is this even going to matter? You know what? They won the NL pennant in 15. I said this. I'm saying exactly what I said in the minute this morning. They won the pennant in 15. They made the playoffs in 16 and put up a hell of a fight against the Giants in the NL wildcard game that year. And since then... It has just been injury after injury after, you know, fail to live up to performance, you know, fail to live up to potential for some of these guys and has just been missed playoff, missed playoff, missed playoff. They even missed the playoffs when, you know, it was eight teams from each league and that expanded 16 team 
weird, bizarre thing in 2020. So, get out of the failure. Until I see that, you know, the Mets are back in the postseason, these moves are never going to matter. But what do, we, what do we say, guys? What do we say? S O M. Same old Mets. Let's give some context to what he actually signed for. Context is necessary. Well, oh, okay. We're going to go there first. Okay. So, Mets signed Max Scherzer <laughs> for a three year, $130 million deal. So, here's my take. He deserves some sort of big contract. He deserved it after helping the 2019 Nationals to a World Series. However, no, absolutely. But, but, uh, wait, you're telling me I'm wrong? No, no, no. You're you're absolutely right. No, I just Nick really, Morgan just busted. I just really wish it wasn't the. Uh, I just really wish it wasn't the Mets. I. No, it, nobody is worth forty three million dollars. No one. I mean, at that, I mean, if if it was if he was in his twenties, you wouldn't say that. By the way, this is BS BS syndrome all over again. It is how? Because it's his agent. Uh, well, from Anthony. I, well, I know that. I know that. But but still, if he was in his twenties, you're going to be telling me he wouldn't be making thirty uh, forty three million a year? Absolutely not. I think that's a horrible take, Nick. Honestly, uh, yes, yeah, seriously. What 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 are you smoking? And where can I get some? You're telling me, Steve Cohen, the guy that we are all loathing about because he's worth $13 billion. Look at the money being spent in other sports. Again, and I think a lot of the loathing that we're experiencing happens to be sour grapes because we're all Yankee fans. Because I wouldn't have given him that money. Yes, but I think a lot of our criticism and criticism of Yankee fans is really because the salt mines are open. We're all salty. The fact that, comment from Anthony, the fact that so many big... I think he means big moves that were not competitive. In other words, like we were talking about how it's not not the big market teams that are spending. There's no Yankee no Yankee moves, there's no Dodger moves, there's no Astro moves, there's one Red Sox move maybe, but the only big club big market club who's doing any spending right now are the METS Mets. And you know what? This is just another step for get vaccinated. Just get vaccinated. Looking at this story from a macro perspective, it seems tailor-made to piss me off because it has to do with COVID and you off because it has to do with dumb NBA shit. Well, this is Adam. Well, actually, I can't even say this is Adam Silver. This is Canada. Oh, Canada. More like, oh, brother. Like I said in the ETB minute. I don't blame Canada. You do? No, I'm not blaming Canada. I'm saying this is because the NBA won't get its shit together and figure it out. Blame Canada. Blame Blame Canada. Canada. I mean, you're right, Nick. Like you said in the promo, I'm gonna need a I'm gonna need a Canadian exchange for the amount of puns I'm making about Canada. Yeah, but look, it's gonna come to a head, though. We we know that, right? It's going to come to a head where some people are just going to be mysteriously left off the rosters and then mysteriously return, even if we don't know their vaccine status. It's going to become blazingly apparent who's vaccinated, who's not. But we know this. I think that in the story, and this was according to ESPN, like 95% of the NBA is considered vaccinated. And I think about and I think about 60% they said was boosted. So and, suppo- and supposedly uh the people who we know would be affected, that we know would be affected by these uh by these new rules, kind of uh you know, they're kind of involved in other things already. Like, some of them are injured, so they wouldn't be playing anyways. Or, in the case of your boy, Kyrie Irving, the Nets have already said you're not going to play this season, period, unless you're vaccinated. Is he still your boy, or is he like an estranged family member at this point? There's our answer. But yeah, yeah, there's your answer. But you Sorry. Know, it, it, Kyrie matters, Irving. Yeah, it matters who the 5% is. Well, I can tell you right now, he's part of the 5%. We already knew that publicly. But at the same time, just get vaccinated. How many times do we have to say this? I'm And I'm getting really pissed off because we're right before the holidays and we're and I'm getting angry over NBA vaccination bullshit. Welcome back to part two of the best of Empty the Bench. We've got top sports headlines of 2021. And I would just like to thank the year 2021 for being just a as much of a garbage fire as 2020 was. Really. <laughs> it's a garbage fire in different ways, but a garbage fire nonetheless. 
I mean, between COVID, between the NBA, between the NFL, MLB, and you know what? Throw the NHL in there because we decided to close the border. So, so as the as the final chapter of our best of 2021 for Empty the Bench, we decided to throw in what we like to call it's a little bit of ego stroking exercise. It's the best of Nick and Nick and Tom. Basically, all the Great clips that where we look like idiots, we make bad predictions, we make good rants, we have good jokes, we make each other laugh. It's almost like a blooper reel. Well, I also said, I'll give you one teaser since we're going to talk about it. I said that Aaron Rodgers should have been traded to the Browns. Yeah, and that really that really didn't age well. So if you want to see that, make sure you tune in to part three yeah. of the best of Empty the Bench for 2021. Make sure that you check out check us out on social media at ETB Sports, at ETB Network. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell. I'm serious. Hit that bell because there is going to be a lot of interesting moments. I guarantee you that there's going to be some great UFC moments from Tom in there as well. Ring, ring, ring. Because, and I'm sure Nick lost his mind quite a few times. I probably lost my mind a few times. I've probably been on more LeBron rants than I can possibly remember. So you you rant about LeBron more than LeBron does. Well, eh, who cares? Um, <laughs> I, I, I'll save that for when we do uh, next week's show. So for Nick Federa, I'm Nick Morgan for Tom Battle Producing. This has been the best of Empty the Bench Part Two. We will see you for Part Three of uh, the best of Empty the Bench. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs>